Hi, welcome back, Wealth Team family. My name is David Sidisa, and I'm here with my buddy Moya. And today we're going to be uh, welding out this full piece, and our friends here from Superheat are going to help us pulse weld heat treat it. Check out weldlife.com and shop all welding gear shown in this video. All right, guys, so today we're going to be building a control loop spool. My friend Andy here is going to help me fit up the first two welds, and then we're going to flip flop. He's going to weld the other two, and then uh, afterwards we're going to pulse weld heat treat it. I'm going to be using the yeah, combo weld technique. I'm going to be using TIG on the root and hot, and I'm going to use a 532-70AC on my fills and caps. I'm going to TIG mine all the way out. All right, guys, so going to go ahead and start on my root here. I am going to be doing uh, walking the cup on these roots, you know, just kind of quartering it. Just roll and roll, especially since I got on the rollout wheel here. Just what's easiest, quickest way to fabricate for me. Warm up the tack where you're starting off and just keep walking forward, sweeping side to side. I've got my wire probably about halfway underneath the bevel to give me a little bit of reinforcement. You know, just a steady, smooth walk and feed. All right, so same thing on this quarter. What you would kind of see in a fab shop, you know, you're just going to be welding and welding. There'll be a lot of rollouts. Important when you're walking the cup, you don't want to be sticking out too far and create too much of a puddle. You don't want to be also too short of a stick out on the tungsten and you know sitting in the bevel you're trying to reach down you're going to be cutting your wire instead of kind of creating a puddle and and moving it forward all right so going to start on our second route here on this 90. same thing walking the cup back feeding so this one has a little bit bigger gap so i went ahead and turned it down five amps so going to go ahead and start our hot pass here my buddy andy's going to help me roll this out got the machine at 175 amps Pretty hot, but you know, I'm welding up on the top. All right, Andy, start rolling. Roll, roll a little bit faster. Okay. Yeah, we're good right there. You know, you got to communicate if you guys are going to try doing this. You know, he can't exactly see what I'm seeing. You know, in here, just really hot, just a clean sweep side to side. All I'm doing is just kind of evening out. Any imperfections on the exterior of my root right here. Just do a nice clean pass on our fill. Just staying up on top and rolling the piece this direction. You know, I'm just moving my puddle. I'm, I'm barely oscillating, just trying to get my puddle all the way up to the, almost the edge of the bevel. Got my machine at 175 amps, 532, 7018. You know, just continue a nice smooth fill. And depending on the size of the spool you're working, you know, it can kind of get heavy sometimes on these rollout wheels where a positioner is probably a little bit better, but since this spool is pretty small, it's not too bad here. All right, guys, so we've got our two welds here already flushed out. I'm going to go ahead and also cap with 532 7018. Now it's just going to be one bead, just making sure I cover both bevel edges and also rolling out. No, I just oscillate just a little bit when I need to move the puddle over. And I kind of got to wait, let the puddle do the work. Let it build up, fill up. You know, rolling out can be a skill learned in itself. You know, you're you're using one hand to turn the pipe. You're welding with one hand. All right, guys. So I got the first weld all capped up here. Gonna go ahead and cap the second one. You know, still using 7018, 532, 175 amps. All right, guys. So I'm done with the first two welds of the spool. I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Andy, and he's gonna continue on finishing off this spool. Right uh, there, looks good. I got all my stops and starts grinded down. I like to feather them pretty good. That way, when I tie in, they fuse nicely. And I'll start about a little bit of tack, kind of warm her up. Once I get to that edge, and I'll start feeding some wire, going back side to side, feeding each side of the bevel, watching my puddle, going on my tie in. I'll slow down a little bit, tie it in there, hold, make sure it fuses a little fast. Trying to get as even of a fill as I can. Walking and filling, walking and filling. Push that wire into my tie-in. Go a little past it. See the cap comes out on this one. It's a little too low. Then I'll put a second cap on top. When you're starting off um, on a rollout wheel and stuff, if, if you feel comfortable and you want to just quarter it, reposition yourself, quarter it, that's fine. And then as you get more practice and, and time under the hood, you'll be able to walk the cup, roll it, reposition, 
walk the cup, roll it, reposition. All right, we're gonna fit up this last wall, the six inch. Just keep going side to side, small steps. Whatever you feel comfortable with. I like to freehand my roots, so. Trying to close up on me a little bit up here, so. And so now I'm gonna flop it this way. Do the jack stands, do the other side of the root. Right there, slide my cup side to side, hitting those walls. And right now I'm burning at 200 amps and I'm using 532 filler wire. These bigger wires, you're not burning hot enough, you're taking too big of steps, taking those smaller steps, pushing that wire. It's not fusing in really good. You see you're fusing in really good, feeding some wire. You could get lack of fusing. Alright dude, I'm done, I'm capped out man. Cool man, you know we're gonna have to post heat treat this, so I'm gonna go ahead and send a drawing in on the Smart View app and get our wrapping spec sheet so we know how to wrap this up and postal heat treat it. All right, cool. So we got our wrapping spec sheet all printed up. Cool. Looks like we got all our heater pads. We're gonna go ahead and start wrapping this up and then uh, we'll send this into superheat and have them fire it up for us. All right. Hey guys, I got something that might be a little faster than this. This is good for when we're doing some stuff that has quite a bit of welds on it. But for this particular piece, we could utilize our smart furnace. Well, cool, man. Can we yeah. check it out? Sure, absolutely. So this is a, a smart furnace that has nine heaters it's run by these uh, smart packs here we're able to control it remotely um, these are great for remote locations and if you have a lot of small bore piping or, or spool pieces it's about five feet by three feet and about three and a half feet tall it saves on time it saves on energy now to bring power to this we've got our generated rig back here this is superheat technology we've got a generator with our machine attached to it so in, uh, in a lot of different job sites We've got real small uh, space issues, right? So instead of bringing a generator on one trailer and a, a heat machine on another trailer, we've got all in one. You can see it's a pretty small trailer, so it fits in tight spots like we've got here. So when this thing generates power, our rig here, which has eight ports, we can run eight cables off of this machine. Each cable is capable of running three heaters. Okay, so what we have here is our smart view, which gives us access to our equipment. This is controlling our SAM, and we go directly to that, and it'll allow us to control our rig over here. When I hit on, it'll send an electronic signal and communicate to our SAM, which will then power on our GR unit. Okay, now that our GR unit has been turned on remotely, we're ready to unlock the smart pack and get this run started. All right guys, so there you have it. Showed you guys how to build a spool piece and post well heat treat it. Thanks to the guys from Superheat for letting us use this awesome furnace. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys on the next one.